Frollo is the app that several thousand single parents say has been life-changing for them in the most profound way. If you're a single parent and want to connect with other single parents and open yourself up to an amazing support network and new experiences, then the Frollo app is the one for you. The Frollo app has two modes, community mode for meetups and holidays, guidance and support, chats and discovery to make it easy to find like-minded local single parents near you. Dating mode is a mindful, safe and respectful dating offering where everybody is there to date another single parent. All users on Frollo are verified, putting our user safety first always. The Frollo app is free to download and use with the option to upgrade to premium for access to lots of additional premium features for an elevated experience, which makes it easier than ever to access the incredible connections and experiences you are looking for. To download Frollo, search for Frollo, F-R-O-L-O, on the app or Google Play Store, or go to www.frollo.com for more info. We can't wait to see you on the app soon. Hi, I'm Zoe Desmond, the founder of Frollo, the award-winning app for single parents that features both community and dating modes. And I'm also co-author, along with my wonderful friend, Rebecca Cox, that I made through Frollo, of the book, How to Be a Happy Single Parent. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Frollo podcast. Today, I am so pleased to be joined by the lovely Lydia Bright, who is a known TV personality. You might remember her from The Only Way is Essex. And she's also an entrepreneur, a single mom, and now a children's author as well. Lydia, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I know we're itching to talk. We had a little chat before we uh, hit the record and I feel like there's so much for us to talk about. <laughs> exactly. I know. We had to we had to stop ourselves from getting into all of the juicy content without hitting record. So so yeah, really, really looking forward to getting to know you a bit more. And I yeah. guess the perfect place to start off really is you know, given what the Frollo podcast is and, and our listeners are single parents, I think the the, the the most relevant place to start off is is your own single parent story and how yes. that came to, to, to be. Yes. So I actually became a single parent um, when I was pregnant. So I was 12 weeks pregnant um, when me and my daughter's father... Uh, separated um so for me I've been yeah a single parent from the get-go really um I mean at the beginning it was so daunting and so scary when I was pregnant um and I worried immensely about you know people's judgments um you know like all that background noise um and yeah, then I had Loretta and I've never known any different. I've been a single parent yet yeah, from, from the day that she was born. Um, how, how, sorry, how old is Loretta now? So Loretta will be four, um, February the 21st. So okay. next month. Um, and yes, yeah, since she's been born, it's only ever been me and her. There's never been... Um, like another partner in the picture. So it's been my whole journey of motherhood has been a single parent, um, which, yeah, so obviously I don't know any different to it being like a two-parent family household to a solo parent household, um, but completely hand on my heart, um, I wouldn't have it any other way. And, I love that. And I'm a massive believer in destiny, and I believe everything in life happens for a reason, you know, and this, I believe that this was always meant to be my path. I think that I was always supposed to be a single mum. And yeah, I think it's uh, in the, in the weirdest possible way. I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me. I love that. <laughs> I love, I love that. I, I, I feel like we've kind of like already done the full circle thing of what it is really to be a single parent because I feel exactly the same. I yeah. at the beginning of my 
journey and mine was through a relationship breakdown with my son's dad when um, my son Billy had just turned one and you know it it had been breaking down for quite some time so it it wasn't an you know completely out of the blue it had been an ongoing thing Um, but I thought this is the worst thing that could possibly happen how am I gonna deal with this you know and it it just felt so overwhelmingly challenging and and hard and bleak and now I feel exactly as as you as you just said you do that it's the best thing that's ever ever happened to me and it's been the making of me as a person and completely and and it's how and I, I I truly believe that I am a much better mom and human and role model um, this way than I would have I been echo the other ev- way. I echo every single word that you've said, and oh. I'm sure so many people will feel the same. Mm. You know, I think when you first find out that you're going to be a single parent, I mean, mine was quite out the blue, to be honest. So mine was a, 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 a quite a big shock. So I think I dealt with, I was dealing with heart heartache, which obviously is painful enough as itself. But I think, I think it's completely natural that you, unless you you fully go about it, knowing that you're going to be doing it as a solo parent, which is like so brave. And there's so many women out there, you know, that go in it via sperm donor route adoption, that they go in it fully knowing that, it, that it's always going to going to going to be just just them. But I think in my circumstance, I almost went through all these feelings that are probably completely natural that, you know, you've probably been through so many people have been through where I felt like I'd failed. I Mm. felt like I'd failed and I felt a bit embarrassed. Like I just felt, I felt really embarrassed and yeah, I was dealing with heart heartache and I felt lonely and I went through all of these, you know, really awful emotions. Um, and then, yeah, as soon as Loretta arrived um, and, you know, I fell madly head over heels in love with her, you know, there was no time to feel heartbroken because my heart was full of so much love for this child. Um, but also as well, I think, yeah, like all of those feelings of of feeling like embarrassed or you know that all just became yeah like background noise because really I was so content and so happy and so there was so much you know joy in my life that I didn't want to let any of those intrusive thoughts kind of like ruin things for me. Well that's that's amazing that you were able to to you know shift your kind of focus in in that way because I I I mean I just can only relate to what I was, you know, kind of dealing with the the breakdown of the relationship probably really since I was pregnant with my son, Billy, and then in the first year of his life, and then it ended up breaking down fully, you know, just, just when he turned one. But I can't imagine, you know, being, you know, like you were saying, kind of being 12, 12 weeks pregnant, because I just remember the I just remember the 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 hormones and the roller coaster of pregnancy anyway and thrown in with the you know dollop of the relationship kind of troubles as well that I was dealing with which I'm sure you can relate to but ha- you know it must have been that must have been really tough and, it and, and, and yeah and I know that there's a lot of people listening and a lot of people in the Frollo community as well who will relate to that who have been in a similar situation where they are you know they, they, they end up being a single parent really kind of from during pregnancy so yeah so and yeah. you know what it, it really is but I'm I and at the time you know it's hard sometimes see the sunshine isn't it through the rain but I Mm. honestly do believe that it was the best way for it to happen and I never you know harboured onto any you know real anger anger for how it happened because of I think that I think it was supposed to happen this way because of I didn't have to go through you know now when now 
now I'm out the other end, you know, I look and I think, you know, me and Loretta's dad, I don't think that me and him would have lasted the test of time. I can honestly stand that hand on my heart. We can get on really well when we get on, you know, fine now, but I don't think we were the right fit for each other. So in a way, as hard as it was for me to go through the breakup during pregnancy, I'm glad that, no, I never had to deal with, you know, the com dealing with complications of a relationship during that like newborn bubble you know mm. I'm glad that I was just able to enjoy all those you know precious milestones and all those you know beautiful moments um that come with having a newborn child without having to deal with you know the complications that probably would have happened in our relationship well I can actually kind of yeah attest to what what you're saying there because that's I my relationship was kind of breaking down in in that newborn kind of phase and for that first year and I have to say I do look back with sadness and guilt on those early days I just feel like because I was struggling so much because of the relationship breakdown I wasn't able to be my absolute best but then I think that self. you can't ever hold on to that because that was your journey mm, it that was. was your journey and I do also think you know you have to try you have to try if, if you if you can you know and there obviously was love there once upon a time and you know everyone holds on to that at some point mm. um you know it, it, but it's, it's just the reality of life isn't it and I think that you either you know, naturally we have to go through all the emotions, but I think that you either, you know, hold on to what could have happened or you just accept that that part of your life wasn't meant to be, but you survived it and, you know, you you can thrive from it. And as I said, like, similar to you, like, I always believe this is my destiny and I think that it has made me such a happier um person it's also you know made our relationship so much better and it's also pushed me like into so many avenues in my life that maybe I wouldn't have gone down had I not been a single mum and it's pushed me to succeed in in areas that I don't think that I would have pursued had I not been a single mum so I believe that this was always meant to be this way and I'm so grateful and I'm not saying that you know, I'm going to be a single mum forever. Um, you know, I hope one day, I think we all, you know, think that like, what, what I think we all hope that one day we'll be like in a two parent family and, you know, I would love to have more children. Um, but I do honestly think that my years as a single mum will always be the happiest moments of my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there's something, <laughs> I, I think that I, I totally understand. I totally relate. And I think, um, you know, actually, I heard I heard someone say um, recently that that, she, you know, it might have been a friend of mine, actually, a Frodo friend of mine, but saying that no matter what happens, she will always think of herself as a single mom. But that not in a negative way, in a really, really kind of positive way because of the because of the pride of the journey and, yeah. you know, being able to kind of fully like stand on your own two feet and kind of tackle anything that comes along and to be you know that that sort of resilience and 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 all of that and I I identify with that you know I've kind of now for something that felt I was ashamed of at one time you know it 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 feels like a badge I wear with pride and oh I'm with you with that I feel yeah. like you when you be so when I announced that I was um going to be a single mum when I was pregnant um through like my I did like a magazine interview and I was by myself and you know I announced it and then I popped it up on my social media and I was so nervous about the reaction mm. and totally with you with that like I feel like you almost become part of like this club and I got like this 
outpouring of support from, you know, single mums, that similar situation with me, you know, that been single mums since pregnancy or, you know, newly single mums or children from single parent families. And I got like so much empowerment from these messages. I remember like I went to the supermarket the next day and like people coming up to me and like, I'm a single mum. And, you know, like if, if ever I do get recognised and it, like if I'm out and about, that's normally why people will come up to me. They'll say, Lydia, I'm a single mum. I follow you on Instagram. And that's that kind of gets the conversation going. I feel like we've, we're in this point in society now where like we are all like we are all celebrated and mm. we should be so proud because we've become part of this like club for, you know, the the strong and the warriors. Like I feel like it, it's this really elite club that we are part of and we should never feel embarrassed I think exactly that, uh, I think um, that the more that we all scream and shout and empower each other the more that we will all feel you know so, like so strong because um yeah I the the support that I get that I got just yeah it empowered me so much I know. And there's no greater crew than, you know, a single parent, (laughs) single parent crew in terms of like the level of the level of support, the level of empathy, the level of everyone wanting, you know, wanting to kind of chip in and and help your single parent friends, even though you're a single parent, you've got the, you know, it's just, it really is. It, there's nothing there's nothing like it and um, yeah um it's it's amazing so do you do you have a good support network around you yes I'm very very lucky that I have got the most incredible family I always say like I won the life lottery when oh. I was born to my parents because they are so incredibly supportive in everything that I do um especially yeah through parenthood I mean my parents have got so much experience so they're actually foster carers um so they have been raising children since for like 30 32 years um so as well as their own um four biological children they've also got um two adopted children and then they also foster so my parents whole life has been dedicated to raising children wow and I yeah and I remember when I was pregnant and I knew that I was going to do it alone. I remember sitting on the sofa crying to my mum and she's the most positive person ever. Um, And she looked at me and she went, why are you crying? And I was like, no, it's the worst thing in the world. And my mum turned around to me and she said, no bad can ever come from having a child. Um, And she like honestly believes that. And it's so true. Like every child that came through our house, you know, even if, they, you know, the children sometimes that came into our care were born, like, in awful circumstances, you know, born to parents that were really sick, dealing with addiction and stuff. And the joy that they brought to our lives and the joy that they, they you know, brought to so many people's lives, um, you know, is immense. And and th- my mum is just so, so totally, like, right. And all, the, all those, you know, feelings when I was pregnant and, you know, questioning myself and doubting myself and doubting, you know, the way that the path like was turning out in my life, there was no bad that was ever going to come to it from it because of Loretta was born and it was, and she is the making of me. Um, So yeah, they're the most incredible parents. And then as well as that, where I've got so many siblings as well, they've all been so hands-on. Loretta's the first grandchild in the family. I can only so, imagine how she's so spoiled. Um, I can only imagine <laughs> she's got three aunties and two uncles um, who all absolutely idolise her. On my oh. side, she's also got her family on her dad's side. But on my side, yes, she's got she's got all of those aunts and uncles. Um, my dad. Um, during COVID because Loretta was born two weeks before COVID and during COVID he had to medically retire and he'd worked his whole life um you know he's always been such a grafter and then all of a sudden he was like worried about what he was going to do to fill his time and what his purpose in life would be and along came Loretta and I was like brilliant you can help out (laughs) as much as you want she can be a little purpose as well and he's been 
incredible. He helps so much with, you know, pickups and if I'm stuck in town and um, yeah, they're just, I've just got a really amazing support system. So I class myself very, very lucky because yeah, although, you know, it has its challenges sometimes being a single parent, not having somebody living with you in the house, being able to have somebody that you can like rely on instantaneously like if you're like oh I need to just quickly jump in the shower especially when they're babies yeah not having that like person to just bounce off straight away you know although that is hard I'm so lucky that like my family all live within like 15 minutes from me and there there's always so good yeah and there's always someone willing to to help so I think that yeah that's the big thing when it comes to single parenthood like I think you really need to be able to build yourself a village, whatever that village looks like, because naturally, you know, we all need support, especially all all parents, but single parents, especially, especially single parents that are also working, you know, you need to have a village just to be able to step in and help when they can. Completely. I know that was the, the reason why I had to create Frollo because I was looking looking for the village and, and couldn't find it. Um, but that kind of it sort of takes us into to a question I wanted to ask. Well, two questions I wanted to ask. Yeah. Um, and what what are what would you say do you find most challenging as a single parent? Yeah. And what are your favorite things about being a single parent? Yeah, so I think with me, it's hard when it comes to challenges because I've never known any difference. So, you know, where it's always just been this way for me, it's not like I had to have like, it's it, it for me, it's just always been my journey of motherhood. So it's hard to differentiate what it would be like if there was another person here because it has always just been us two. But the only th- obvious thing that I could probably point out would be the fact, yeah, just not having someone here readily available um if I need to like jump on a zoom or or go and have a shower or finish emails that sometimes you know that can be a little bit overwhelming like if you haven't got someone just to be able to like tag team with um especially when they're that little bit younger I mean Loretta's at that age now where you know if I've got a crack on with work or I've got to do like laundry or something I can just set her up with play-doh and she'll play for a little bit but when they're babies Yeah, but when they're babies, it's obviously that's so much that's so much harder, isn't it? Because you have to, if you're jumping in the shower, you have to take them up in the baby carrier, and if they start crying and you're mid shampooing, well, you've got to get out. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to get out. So you know those that 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 was probably more the challenges. Yeah, like the obvious challenges. Um, But yeah, apart from that, there's nothing really that I can really like pick out because of I've never known any different sort of thing Mm. but um I would say for me like the highs are that I think the bonds that I have with Loretta especially as well because she was born during lockdown so again I'm a massive believer in destiny and of course I wish that Covid never happened like everybody else but if it was ever going to happen in my life it happened at the perfect time because um, you know, I'd always lived this life where I was like here, there and everywhere and, you know, busy away filming and, you know, uptown and doing all these things. And all of a sudden COVID hit and she was two weeks old and I was forced to stay at home. And I absolutely loved just like stripping life back to like the simple things and being at home with my baby and really getting to know her. I mean, I was working, but I was working from home. Um And I just think that that bond um, that we ended up having and those memories that we ended up having were just so magical. And I will never get that back with any child that I ever have because I basically had like two years on and off, just me and Loretta in a house. Um, I know, obviously, we had parts of time where we were out of lockdown, but Mm. a lot of time it was just me and Loretta in the, in the house and oh I loved it so much like selfishly I absolutely loved like just having all those like magical moments to myself and um just being able to give her like my undivided attention like yeah I was working when she was sleeping but when she was awake it was like I could just give her 
all of me because of it was only us two. Um, and I think she's thrived in that environment as well. Like she's she's so um, she's so smart, and I think that that's always been because of I've been able to give her so much um, because it's just been me and her. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I, when people ask me what my favorite things are about being a single parent as well, one of the things that comes up every time is the bond yeah. that I have with my, with my son, Billy. I just feel like it's, I, I feel like it's because I'm a single parent and it's, and it's just me, you know, it's just me and him. And it's, and it's so amazing. You know, we, we feel like, we feel like a little team and it's, it's, so beautiful um oh definitely so, yeah. look I do believe that we've all got unlimited love and there's probably more love in me to give elsewhere mm. but really it's it my since she's been born it's like all my love goes into Loretta and even down to things like co-sleeping I've always co-slept with Loretta um would I have done that had I not been a single mum probably not I don't think a lot of men would, would want to <laughs> not sleep in the same bed as their partner for four years and you know, that has been like the most, I absolutely love co-sleeping with Loretta. Like we sleep cuddled up like every night and, you know, she has the odd sleepover at my family's house and my parents' house sometimes. But, you know, majority, like 90% of our life, like of, of her evenings and me and her cuddling up at bedtime and, you know, we read books together and we talk and we wake up in the morning and she's always like morning what was your dream and it's just like that lovely oh, thing sweet. of just sleeping side by side next to your baby mm. which isn't very common in in the UK but it's like a lot of uh, countries they a lot of them sleep with their children until they're they are they co-sleep with their children to a lot till they're a lot older but I've absolutely loved co-sleeping um well I I wish I could say the same I do in theory <laughs> but I get bashed around the place and <laughs> what happens is is that my son Billy doesn't understand how to just lie in a bed in like a, a normal position so it's kind of just you know do you know what the over. trick is there Zoe what? and you're gonna laugh but I still sleep with my maternity pillow you know like oh, in huge- between you know, that, yeah, but you know the yeah. huge U-shaped ones that are like yeah. the full size of your body. Mm. I basically sleep in that; it barricades me in. So and that's a good <laughs> idea. I was thinking, how do you get your night's sleep? I mean, yeah, I'm I have not mastered that one. Yeah, I do, I, do, I do love it, but I'm always sleep deprived whenever <laughs> we share a bed. Yeah, unless, unless it's a very big bed. But um, so now I would love to hear what, yeah, what inspired your your book mommy and me so I read I thank you so much for for sending it to me by the way I read it with um with Billy at bedtime over the weekend and we both loved it it's such a such a magical story and I won't I won't give too much away but it's it's such a lovely book so I would definitely recommend that everyone gets a copy and yeah so I'd love to hear about when did you start thinking about writing a book and why Yes. So as I was saying earlier, when I was pregnant, I probably wasn't in the best headspace. So I was just like a little bit lost and I definitely needed a little bit of distraction, a project to chuck myself into. Um, And I found that when I was looking for books that represented single parent families to put on Loretta's bookshelf, um, because naturally I was like worrying so much, would she feel represented in books and would she feel represented in cartoons? I found that everything that was out there was kind of more aimed at like older children and it was just quite informative. The stories weren't very magical. Um, So the idea came about to, create um a magical story that just represented a single parent family but without it being like super factual um and I came about the idea of having elephants um because I discovered that elephants in the wild are all single mothers no way (laughs) yes so what happens in the wild with elephants is um the male elephant will mate with the female and will 
you know, leave before the calf is even born. Um, and then um, it's up to the female elephant and the herd, which is a, a mixture of the matriarch, which is normally the grandmother, um, and the aunts, and then the cousins, I suppose, yeah, or the younger calf, they all form a herd. So, yeah, that kind of became like the basis of, uh, the, like the foundation of the story, really. And um, that's where my love for elephants began I actually discovered Zoe that there's so many different family setups in the animal kingdom so for example because I when I was doing all my research so for example mm. um kangaroos they adopt so if a um kangaroo uh, Joey will jump out of its mother's pouch and jump into another kangaroo pouch that kangaroo will adopt the joey no um, there's, way yes there's also a lot of like bisexual animals that are in the animal kingdom so my whole thought process then kind of became that you know if we can have all different um, um family setups in the animal kingdom then why can't um we have that in the human world why has it always got to be a mum and a dad and that's like wolves for example they they make for life and it's a mum and a dad and they have their wolf pack they have loads and loads of animals together but you know there's all there's all different animals that live in different types of family setup so that's we, so amazing we, yeah, yeah we, we are animals feel inspired well. exactly yeah, by the natural we don't have world to do around it us one way exactly, exactly. We don't have to we don't have to do it one way. And if they're, they're all living harmoniously in different family setups and so can we. So I love um, that. I love that. So yeah, that. that's, that's where it came. And it, it, I just wanted it to just be like a, yeah, like a magical story. And then the, the, then the actual story has evolved so much from the first draft because, um, you know, I just chopped and changed it. And as I said, you know, me personally, my headspace completely changed when Loretta was born. So the story became like a lot happier and positive. And also as well, just naturally as her personality evolved um, and our dynamic evolved, I kind of wanted the book to mirror sort of like our personalities and um, the journey of motherhood. So I'm sure that so many people will be able to relate to the story uh, the the story because it's just it shares the chaos that comes with motherhood yeah as well. <laughs> I, I I I loved it um as I was saying I, I read it to well my son and I read it together over the weekend and it is such a magical story and that bond you know that we spoke about earlier also really comes through and just that lovely you know, yeah, it's just a really, it's just a really, really beautiful, a, a, a beautiful story. And it's so great as well to have, you know, different types of families rep represented in um, children's books like that Definitely. as well. Yeah. And I was so lucky because the Puffin, who are the publisher that bought my book, uh, well, not bought my book, um, what would be the word? <laughs> they're, well, they're my publishing team. Yeah. Um, when they... Um, when they came on board, I was so lucky because of the, my editor, um, who is called Joe Marriott, he's actually from a single parent family. So he was so passionate about this book. Um, and Puffin in general were just a publishing team that are very much about like ensuring that children feel represented in books, whether that's through family setups, race, religion. Um, so they were, yeah, like the dream publishers to go with. Um, and yeah, it's just been like a really magical journey, really. Oh, and Loretta must be so proud. Oh my gosh, Zoe, I got asked this the other day. Everyone was like, oh, <laughs> so how does she feel that like her mum's an author and that she's like dedicated this book to her? I read it to her the first, for the first time and shared it with her for the first time. Like Loretta doesn't really know what mummy does. She knows that mummy works. Like yeah. we have an office in my house and she, she knows that when she goes to school that, you know, mummy works, but she doesn't really know what I do. Uh, 
so uh yeah the other day i, I made her sit down i put this on my instagram um i made her sit down with my family and i said oh you, you know mummy's got a present for you and this is something that mummy's been working on for you know a long period of time you know when mummy goes to our office and, stuff. and i gave her the book and you know where it's been like well this process has been like over four years in the making from the first draft being written to now yeah being like longer long exactly like long period of time longer than a pregnancy and a, and a birth longer, and all, yeah, all of that. longer than yeah. her lifespan yeah <laughs> So I gave it to her and yeah, I really didn't get the reaction that I wanted. So like, you know, it was such an anti-climax. I was so excited and she, there, no, she just didn't get it. I, do you know what? I if it's any consolation because um, my book came out uh, la- last year. My myself and and my Frollo friend Rebecca Cox wrote a book called How to Be a Happy Single Parent, and and that came out just at the end of last year. And if it's any consolation, that kind of moment that I dreamed of with my son <laughs> Billy as well was like ta-da look at that you know <laughs> it was kind of like what wait what you know um so uh, yeah I think that's parenthood for you isn't that's it that's parenthood for you <laughs> exactly just you know don't don't dream up these amazing sort of scenarios <laughs> in your head because they don't usually work out no um, kids will be kids exactly exactly they keep us they keep us um they keep us humble and on our on our toes at the same definitely. time definitely I'm sure if I maybe covered the cover of the book in chocolate that I would have got a little bit more of enthusiasm but yeah <laughs> I know oh well I'm sure I'm sure as time goes on she'll realize how how proud she is and when other kids start talking about the book as well and when she sees it you know yeah. when she when she sees it all over the place um and so I guess my final question to you in this gorgeous conversation that I've enjoyed so much with you is for any newly single parent who's at the beginning of their journey, whether it's somebody who's, you know, in, in pregnancy and has found themselves, you know, embarking on the journey alone or as a, a, a solo parent by choice or whatever way they've come to be a single parent and maybe somebody who feels at that place where it's daunting and scary and you know you know is seeing is seeing the journey ahead from a from with 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 a fearful perspective what yeah. advice or reassurance could you give them I would probably say my biggest advice, as cliche as it is, is find your village. You don't have to feel like you have to do it all yourself. And as I said earlier, you know, your village can look uh, many ways. Um, It can be family. It can be friends. It could be, you know, the other parent. It can be childcare, nursery. You know, you can't we're not expected to do everything um so you know don't feel guilty about leaning on people um so that would be a big thing and I think the reassurance I think you know if ever you find yourself feeling a little bit sad about the circumstances and you know feeling that it hasn't quite it hasn't quite been the fairy tale that maybe you know we're all taught to dream of when we're like little girls and when we watch these fairy tales and we have a prince and you know we're supposed to get married and do it the fairy tale way if that sometimes gets you down like it did me just remember that you know it's not going to rain forever and sometimes you know things fall apart for better things to fall together and I honestly believe that the story that I'm living now is better than the fairy tale that I ever dreamt of I much prefer doing it this way and you know it's about conditioning us to live our lives the way that we want to do it and not feeling like that we have to conform to the fairy tale we can do it our own way women can do whatever they want these days you know we can work and have amazing careers you know we can raise our children by ourselves you know you don't have to you if you want to do it alone or you find yourself doing it alone then you know that's okay that just shows your strength Amen, sister. Yes, <laughs> agree wholeheartedly. Uh, well, Lydia, thank you so much. It's been really so lovely chatting to you and you have such a lovely, positive attitude of gratitude, I would say. And it's it's really, yeah, it's, it's, 
it's really, really lovely. And I'm so, so, so happy for you that you're enjoying your journey so much. It's obvious that you're just a smitten mother and Loretta is a, is a lucky girl and huge oh, congratulations you. with your book. Oh, thank you so much, Zoe. And the same with you. Billy's very lucky to have such a Aww. strong mum. And I think what you're doing is amazing. Thank you so much. Well, looking forward to staying in touch and yes. keeping an eye on everything you're doing. And 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 yes, looking forward to your Frollo, um, looking forward to your Frollo um, book club as well. Yes. Um, which will be so exciting. So really, really looking forward to that. So yeah, we'll definitely do some more together for sure. Yes. Amazing. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you, Lydia. And um, excited for everyone to, to read your book, Mummy and Me. Oh, thank you. And that's a wrap for this week. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, then I have one small favour to ask. Please, can you take a minute to subscribe to the Frollo podcast and give us a rating and review? This really helps other single parents who might benefit from it find us. The Frollo app, which is fully user verified for user safety, is available on the Google Play Store and the App Store. And you can find out more info and download links at www.frollo.com or follow us on Instagram at Frollo app. And you can purchase your copy of our book, How to Be a Happy Single Parent, at all the major book retailers. Until next time, have a great week.